You have a water tank at the top of the terrace. It has a flat base and stores rainwater for general household use. One day, a naughty kid pokes a small hole at the bottom of the tank using a screwdriver. The tank has a surface area of 2 square meters and was initially filled up to a height of 1.6 meters. The hole made is very tiny, just 2 centimeters square in size. Now here's the catch. Someone climbs the stairs the moment the tank becomes empty. So, the big question is, how much time does the kid have to escape? This sounds like a fun story, but it leads to a real-life physics problem involving fluid flow and calculus. To solve this, we apply Bernoulli's theorem, which is a principle in physics that deals with the conservation of energy in flowing fluids. To understand it simply, imagine water moving through a pipe. As water moves, it carries energy in three forms. Pressure energy, which is the energy stored in the fluid due to pressure from surroundings, then kinetic energy, how fast the fluid moves, and potential energy, how high it is above the ground. Bernoulli's theorem says that the total energy stays the same as the fluid moves. It just shifts between these forms. So when water flows from a higher point to a lower one, it speeds up as it loses height. And if the fluid stays at the same height, then the faster it moves, the less pressure energy it has because when the fluid speeds up, it uses some of that energy to move. So it has less pressure left inside to push on things around it. It's like a budget. If you spend more in one area, you must spend less somewhere else, but the total remains fixed in formula form. Bernoulli's equation is P plus 1 by 2 times rho times V square plus rho times G times H equals constant. Here, P is the pressure at a point in the fluid. Rho is the density of the fluid. V is the speed of the fluid at that point, And H is the height above a reference level. This equation basically says pressure energy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy remains constant. You can pick any two points in the flow and apply this equation and then equate them at those two points to relate what's happening. Maybe one point has high pressure and no motion, while the other has high speed but lower pressure. Now to solve this question, imagine two points, one at the top surface of the water, which we call point one, and one right at the hole, which we call point two. So we can write Bernoulli's theorem here. Now, both the top surface of the water and the hole at the bottom are open to air, so the pressure acting on both is just the normal pressure applied by the atmospheric, which means P, one equals P, two equals P, atmosphere. Therefore, we can simply cancel it out from the equation. Now, the velocity at the top, or point one, is almost zero because the tank is very wide and the surface moves very slowly. This means V1 nearly zero. But the water shooting out of the hole moves fast, and gravity is what's driving that motion. Now, at any moment in time, let this height be equal to H, which keeps decreasing as water flows out. So if this is at height H1 and this is H2, then H1 minus H2 equals H. Now, in this equation, take H2 here, and we get this. Oh, look, rho gets canceled out as well, and this becomes G times H1 minus H2, or simply G times H. Next, take this 2 here and take square root on both sides to get V equals square root of 2 times G, your times H. This is called Torricelli's Law, and it's a magical shortcut to find how fast water comes out from a hole in a tank. But we are not done yet because we need to find out the time it takes for the tank to fully empty. And for that, we need to bring in calculus. Let us see how. Let the area of the top of the tank be A. Now, there's a tiny hole at the bottom. That hole also has a size, which we'll call small a. The water shoots out of that hole with some speed v, which we already found is square root of 2 times g times h. Now, think of this. In a very small time interval, dt second, how much water comes out? But this time interval is so small that the speed of water, which is coming out of the hole, doesn't really change during that moment. We can assume it stays constant for that short instant. In that short time, the water coming out will travel a short distance equal to v times dt, because distance equals speed times time. So now imagine a thin column of water shaped like a cylinder 
with height equal to V times DT and base area equal to the area of the hole, which is small a. The volume of this tiny water column, dV, is simply area times height. So dV equals small a times V times dT. This gives us the volume of water flowing out in that tiny time dt. Now look here. During the same time dt, when the water was flowing out, the height of the water inside the tank decreased by the amount dh. So the change in volume inside the tank is capital A times dh. And since the height went down, we put a minus sign which shows a decrease in volume. That means minus A times dh is the volume lost in time dt. But hey, this will be the same as the volume that flowed out from the hole, right? Because no water is vanishing or appearing magically. Whatever left the tank must have come from the tank itself. So we equate both volumes. Minus capital A times dH equals small a times V times dt. Now replace this V by the expression we found earlier, which is square root of 2 times G times H. Noise. Now, here comes the magic. Take the square root of h on this side and everything else on the right side to get this. Now, integrate both sides. The limits of the integral will be from height h equals initial height. Let's call it h sub 0 down to h equals 0 because the tank is emptying. And on the time side, it goes from time 0 to total time t. The integral of dh by root h is 2 times square root of h. But since we have a minus sign here, we can reverse the limit and get 2 times square root of h from 0 to h sub 0, which equals 2 times square root of h sub 0. Then here all of these are constant, and thus this one is super easy. We get small a over a times square root of 2 times g times t. Now take all of them here to get t equals a over small a times square root of 2 times h over g, and that's it. Substitute these values to get t as nearly this many seconds, or 1 hour and 35 minutes. So that's exactly how long the naughty kid has to make his great escape before someone finally climbs up and catches him red-handed. But wait, now here's something for you to think about. What if the same hole was made halfway up the tank instead of at the very bottom? Will the total time to empty the water above the hole be more, less, or the same? And can you still use the same formula? Let us know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good!